One of our uh, biggest issues with getting uh, through a full set of glute bridges can be hamstring cramping. As we're going through a glute bridge and we're pushing up and down, common complaint is you start to feel binding or a cramping muscle spasm in the back of the thigh and the hamstring area because it's overworking. Uh, so one of our uh, so some of our major prompts to get through this, um, our first one would be just uh, some ankle dorsal flexion. We pick our toes up off the ground and almost like make an arch in the air. So when we drive up, we might feel a little extra pulse to the hip, might take away a little bit of the hamstring tension. Uh, we can have our basic core bracing. We can pick our four points, breathe into it, make sure they're strong as we push up, that that can also cut down on it. We can have a weight overhead. So we can hold a kettlebell, whatever in the air, you can go over top a little bit more to feel a little extra abdominal contraction as we go up and down uh, to get a little extra core bracing. We can do the same thing with a uh, rubber band from overhead also. We can also do One of the uh, band variations going across, you have to push out of the band, drive a little extra, um, extra rotation, and drive up and down to see if we get a cleaner contraction. So, the why behind some of this requires that we draw some pictures. Not an artist, but we'll make it work. So this is going to be our pelvis, and this is going to be our leg. This is going to be our spine, at rib cage. So as we're pushing up and down through the bridge, um, we're going to have to control our pelvic tilt. We have anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt. Anterior would be back arching out, posterior back rounding out. So the main muscles driving through this to control our, to, in order to posterior pelvic tilt this, would be the abdominal musculature on the front, our hamstring, and some of our glutes on the back. So when these guys contract, we get a backward rotation, which would be our posterior pelvic tilt. Like so. Going this way. On the other side of that, we have our lower back muscles and much of our hip flexor group. So when those guys contract, we'll get an anterior pelvic tilt, which would be the other half like so. So all these guys working together, which forms our classic lower cross pattern of people tend to dominate forwards more than backwards. Um, that just kind of forms our classic lower cross pattern of abdominals and hip extensors, which is going to give us lower back flexion, hip extension, and hip flexors, lower back muscles, um, lower back erectors, which is going to give us a little bit of lower back extension and hip flexion. So if we're trying to push through this as we maintain a level pelvis, if we don't have a nice combined contraction between hamstring, glute, and um, abdominals core as we push back, one part can get overloaded. And additionally, to try and push through our hip, this hamstring is also going to try and control the pelvic tilt if the ab isn't contributing. So if we have some of those top-down abdominal prompts and those really help, that just puts more emphasis on we got to work on our midsection control and make that a little bit better. If the abdominal stuff doesn't make as big of a difference, but either pushing across the knees or picking the arch up in the air gives a lot bigger impact, that's going to tell us we're probably not getting as much glute. we got to get a little bit extra push through the kind of like the proximal and the short and more like the um, more like the pelvic hip extensors, more through the glute and the um, and the and, uh, more, more like a glute max, maybe a little bit glute min, to get a little extra push through there in order to, so that our hamstring more just has to focus on pushing through the hip to help get us up and stabilize the knee rather than getting that extra pelvic toe control. So it kind of like evens out the load a little bit. So uh, hamstring, uh, so hamstring cramping during glute bridge, uh, common issue, a couple different ways to attack it, both from like a core and from a hip approach. If we get that extra little bump out of the arch support, out of the uh, kind of the air arch more than anything else, that might tell us when we get our foot on the ground, we gotta work on our balance stuff a little bit harder too, maybe build up a little bit arch along with it. But uh, anyways, we have uh, all these different breakouts throughout our website and videos, so feel free to browse through. Any questions, please email us. Otherwise, enjoy, and thank you for watching.